Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Big Bad Bench. Today, we're going to be watching me uh, break some plastic, most likely. So I have two Power Mac systems. Um, oh, I think I just broke plastic just now, just touching that thing. Uh, so this is the faceplate from a Power Mac 5300 slash 100 LC. Um, we'll show you that full system here. It's right over there on the chair behind me. Um, and then the other system that we have is this Power Mac uh, Performa 6200 CD. Um, so we'll get to work on some of those. Um, I want to say hi to everyone in the chat. Let's show you what we're working on here. Uh, we got Trina's Techno Babble, the Panman GR, Epictronics, Mac 84, Bacchus, Action Retro. Oh, wow. Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, House of Moth. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for stopping by. Always great to see you. So, this is the logic board motherboard. I saw a webpage where they called this a motherboard. I might call it a motherboard today. Don't get too mad at me. Um, so, this 5300 slash 100 LC, um, I wasn't going to buy this thing, but then when I looked at the pictures, they showed the back and it had the video ports and all this other stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of interesting. Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of a cool thing. I wanted to use this to play my Commodore 64 on. Um, so, you know, it's an important machine. Also, I use this as a OS 8 machine. Um, I don't know if how well that, yeah, you can see it. Um, but it started acting weird and I saw some green on the motherboard. Um, so I think we need to pop off these caps. I mean, the, the battery might have leaked a little bit too, and then maybe that's what the issue was. Um, and check on these traces and then put some new caps on right there. And hopefully this will be good to, to, to go, hopefully. Let's see. Um, I'm just here because Dave threatened bodily harm if I didn't show up. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> Bacchus is correcting me on my motherboard slash logic board usage. Go go to that website. I'll find the web page where they use it to prove it. Uh, does anyone have the pinout of a large white connector opposite the ports? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, supposedly, the motherboard with this and the motherboard with this are uh, are convertible, which will be fun. All right, let's wick off these caps and clean this up and see what we got going on. Um, let's go to our microscope. And so we can see we, uh, we have definitely one funky trace here. I don't, I don't like the looks of this one. This one's a little wonky. Um, so let's rip these off. Say goodbye to these caps. Oh, you can't see the caps. The, uh, the solder on those caps looks a little nasty. Sorry if I missed anyone. I saw that uh, there were people on and I hit refresh and then everyone that originally showed up disappeared. So I don't know. I don't know how to YouTube, obviously. This thing's going to blow. There we go. Let's get that one. There is a little header to the left here, so I'm being kind of careful about where my heat's going. All right, there goes that one. So I think what I'm gonna do first is hit this with a little bit of vinegar. Having totally shattered my 5200 case, the idea was to print a, 
a new case. Yeah, well, that would be kind of neat. Um, that pinout has to exist somewhere. I'm sure somebody has it. Um, oof. That's very hot. So I just, I'm dabbing uh, this cotton swab in vinegar and just sort of, sort of coating the area. Just in case there's any battery acid or, I don't know if it's battery acid or cap juice, whatever it was, it's not good. Does that help? Man. I really gotta get a new microscope camera. This is annoying. All right, so set that aside. Now we'll isopropanol it. So yeah, this this board has for the 5300. Um, I think I have every expansion thing possible for this board. Um, it has the a second video out connector. It has the video capture stuff. Um, it has an Ethernet card. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll pop this all apart and show you all the bits in a second. Hey, Sloopy Malibu. Oof. This is kind of ugly. As people say, make sure to take your batteries out. There's actually no reason for me to have let this happen to this machine. Um, I bought this about a year ago. I haven't done much with it, but I should have taken the battery out as soon as I got it. I don't know if the problem was happening before that or not. Um, okay, so let's dry this off a little bit. Let's roll it up. Goodbye, little caps. Go over here. I don't want you in my way. Does this look any better with my own eyes? No, it's all pretty bad. I'm kind of tempted to take this component off. Hey, Justin D. Morgan, how's it going? All right, let's do let's do a little trace polishing here with my my little eraser bit.
Oh, okay, so let's see what we got here. So this trace is definitely mad, bro. Um, get over here so we can check it. So that one's toast. That one's toast. That V is toast. So we got some we got some mess to work on on this one. That sucks. This is way too new of a machine to have to do this much trace repair. I think that was supposed to go to the, the Panman GR. <laughs> Is that the link for how to, for the front connector? Oh, and I just cut myself. Sorry, folks. Let's just double check our trace. That side's good. Oh, you can't see what I'm checking. Here we go. That one's good. That one is not good. That one is not good. Oh, I'm gonna have to take, oh no, okay. I was thinking that this board had a full back on it, but it's just the one side. Gonna check another spot. I don't like the look. No, I think they're okay. All right, so we got some good stuff. Got some bad stuff. My microscope can't focus on any of it. Um, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is add a little flux to this area. Sorry, cut myself. We're off to a great start today. Come in. Just I'm tinning all these traces. this area Oof. All right, 
So, one of the things I'm looking at here that's kind of hard to see is it looks like the via that goes to the leg of this thing is kind of screwed up. But let's focus on one issue at a time. So let's restore the couple of big traces that we know we have issues with. Come on, turn the other way, little thing. Oh my god. Alright, sorry folks, I'm gonna need to stop for a second and just go get a pair of gloves, or one glove, so that you don't have to look at this mess. <laughs> Working on Max is dangerous work. So the mistake I just made here is that I shouldn't have cut the thing off of the wire first. So I'm going to redo that. It's a little bit easier to control when you have more wire on one side of it. on there. Okie dokie. Finally. One stupid little trace. Alright, next. What do we got? We got that little one up there. That one's just going to be a straight shot, hopefully. solder on my tip. And it's on the wrong trace. Oh, yeah. 
<sighs> we are batting a thousand today, folks. Alrighty, let's check those traces. So we're going to go from there. That one's good. This one we're going to go from here. That one's good. Now, how the heck are we going to get these vias? These are some tiny, tiny holes. Guess we'll clean up a little bit first. See what we're looking at. Let's switch back to the regular camera. Let's do a little bit of a zoom in. Let's see if I can show you this in three dimensions. So we're missing a via right there and also one little one next to it. Oh yeah, Vic, you always got to reflow your plus. All right, so we need to figure out where the heck that thing goes. Because I'm not going to be able to feed anything through that hole. So we have two right next to each other. So I think we're probably looking at, all right, let's go back to the microscope. Um, I think we're looking at these two vias right here, that one and that one. one that's closer so since that trace isn't going anywhere does that mean it's basically like a 5 volt or a ground maybe could we get lucky and it's a ground um, so I have one lead on ground
it's just not exposed. So let's scrape a little bit of solder mask off that spot. It's not ground, unfortunately. Oof, this is gonna be a nightmare. All right, well, let's try to, we'll run a little wire from that one all the way around the board to the other side. This is smaller than a whole, than a sewing needle. <laughs> so it's, that, that's a good idea, but this is smaller. I have um, this, so this is um, a tweezer that I've, uh, you know, ground down to, to poke at vias before, um, but even this, this via is just so tiny. I think I should get one of those, like, soldering needle things. Um, let me look through my bag of <laughs> better you than me. Is that directed towards me, Steve? Oh, man. Um, let's see about this. Uh, that might work. Or we might damage the board. What do you say? Should we try it? I think that's the smallest capacitor leg that I have. I save these capacitor legs to repair vias. I try to get really small ones when I can. Oh, that just bent. <laughs> yeah, I think ultimately it I'm gonna have to get some of those really tiny drill bits. Um, let's pop a little flux on there. And hit it with a little bit of solder. Resistor legs are smaller, okay. Um, so the this lead I think was from like a And microfarad capacitor. Generally the smaller capacitors have smaller leads. Yeah, that's not going to go through there. All right, we're going to run a wire all the way around. Maybe if I'm careful, I could try to run this through here? I don't know. Oh. Oh. I think it moved. Or it just bent. One of those two things. Let's 
definitely in there. Yeah, this is an ammo wire that I'm using here. Super tiny. There's actually, I'll show you this. So there's a hole in the board here. So we can feed this through the hole. And actually, while we have this out, let's just try to convince ourselves that this is really the via we're looking for. So I'm going to put my forceps here. Yes. I think that's it. Go back to the microscope. And we'll leave this long in case I screw this up. It'll be easier to grab. Really need to clean my solder tip. But it's good enough for now. Good enough for now. Alright, so now let's see if this thing actually works. this we'll go from there all right so it works it ain't pretty, but maybe I'll, I'll come back. If this works, we'll try to make it prettier. Hide that up there. All right, now I gotta throw a couple caps on right here. Um, I think like most Apple logic boards, yeah, we're dealing with 47 microfarad, 16 volts. If you work on old Macs, keep a big bag of 47 microfarad 16 volt caps around. Oh. I should go back to the microscope. Okay.
Got some nice shiny solder, shiny solder joints there. Um, I just remembered this via looks kind of gr grody. Let me check it real quick by eye. Let's see if I can figure out where it goes. Okay, I think this might be another one that we have to do up top or go around the board let's see what we got um let's see if we can do something just by adding some solder down in there clean my tip first think that's gonna go what happens if we add a little bit of this in there come on go in that hole Yeah, there's nothing left. All right, let's see if we can figure out where that is. Sorry for the lack of anything on screen right now. I just need a second to localize this thing. Oh, well, we could do it here. All right. Put our tweezers here. This board has a lot of vias. Okay. Look at all those vias around where we want to go. I think that it's that one right there. These are there. That direction. That direction, yeah. That's our via. Okay, come back to the microscope. Scratch a little bit of that off. Flex it up a bit. Okay, that's connected there. Okay, 
Again, we're going to feed this through that hole. Alrighty, so now let's see if this one's connected. God, this is ugly. This is so ugly. We got connections. Uh. Oh, and I made a mess of my bench already. Mess of the big bad bench. All right, let's moosh some stuff aside. Oh, man. All right, let's try this thing out. You can set aside for a little bit. that up there. This is like Steve's bench. <laughs> I'm ordering parts tomorrow. Uh, did you say 47 microfarads, 16 volts? Yes, that's for for lots of old Macs. 47 microfarads, 16 volts. Um, actually here, if we look at the rest of this board, 47 microfarad. Oh, there's a different one. That one's 22 microfarad, 25 volt. Um, that one, 22 microfarad, 25 volt is, uh, less common. <laughs> yeah, this, today's stream, oh man, so this board, this board's putting me through some feelings. Oh, I hate moving this thing. I feel it cracking every time I touch it. Ugh. Uh, check. Definitely check out uh, Broncos Creations, recapamac.com slash au. Um, he would have the full listing of all the, all the different caps that you would need for any sort of board. All right, all right. Um, let's slide this board in. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Steve, for posting that link. Give it a mouse just in case we're successful here. Uh, how's it going, Rudy? Um, some electricity. All right, tell me how bad this, uh, the CRT noise is going to be. Oh, I need. Let's see. Where's my faceplate for this one? 
Does this thing actually have a power button? No. I gotta get a keyboard with a power button. One second. No explosion yet. We got a chime. Rudy, why are you hating on my hat, man? Can you hear that AC? Is that disturbing? I can shut that off. This is dirty. I should have cleaned this up before I show it, put it on TV. Oh, okay. So. Uh, yeah, I need a cap like you, Justin. All right, so this is the issue that I've been having with this system. I know you can't see it well because of the flicker but it goes to this screen, which I've never seen this kind of screen before. So I've got an illegal instruction at 00227F24. So, uh, yeah, got an issue. <laughs> we still have an issue. Um, let me try, yeah, it says max bug. Well, let me try one thing. So the um, uh, oh, I need to zoom out a little bit. Sorry. Um, so let me pop out the Ethernet card. This Ethernet card was not originally in this system. second video out port was not in this system oh Jesus <laughs> just broke plastic where are we I don't know where my camera is there we go just broke the little plastic jobby on there <sighs> I knew I was gonna break plastic today take out this video board That's the code for brittle plastic. <laughs> oh, let's try this again without those cards in there. So it is a debugger. So yeah, we really need, um, Mac effects to make some clear cases for these things. So it says debugger installed. Is there a keystroke that uh, can stop that from happening? Starting up. Yeah, 
have to remove the file from the system extensions folder. Well, that would be great if I could boot up. No, actually, I could boot up. I think this will boot up fine in safe mode. I have a feeling it might have something to do with this Ethernet card. Let's see if this boots up. Oh, Eric Helgeson, how's it going, bud? This thing's trying. Oh, we've got extensions started. You can't see that well. Ah, that's a good, good point, Steve. <laughs> They're IDE Max, but I'll still watch your stream. It's actually, I think it's a, a SCSI CD-ROM, isn't it? So we could put a blue SCSI in this thing. This thing is, is la just cranking. Give me all the extensions. You probably can't see them all. Yeah, the at the very beginning it said uh, debugger lo loaded. Sorry for the flickers, folks. Look at all these extensions. Oh my gosh, you can't even see all the extensions. I swear this used to boot up faster. Although it's been a while since I booted it up. Got more extensions. Be patient. Hard drive is indeed chugging away, Justin. Chugga chugga. You might also hear my my AC going. It's just so freaking humid. I need to run the AC. It needs to defrag. Yeah, let's add Norton to it so uh, it'll take even longer to boot up. Yeah, our clock is not set correctly. <laughs> that poor brittle Mac. How's it going, Garth? Yeah, I'd really like to take this case apart. I don't know if you can tell the difference, right? This is kind of, this one is only slightly yellowed. This is like lightly yellowed. I'd like to take this thing apart and retrobrite it, but I don't think it would survive the disassembly. So we got we got our 64 megs, which I think is the maximum for these systems. Um, yeah, this is one of the early IDE Max. All right, well, it turns on and boots. Maybe there is an issue with this uh, Ethernet card, so I'll have to look up that. Shut this thing off, and let's go to our next system. So I think... I mean, nothing caught fire, so that should be a, a, a win, right? We, we fixed some traces, and it booted up, and it didn't catch fire, so I'm going to call that a win. So let's, let's say we fixed that one. My standards are low for these things. No fire, disappoint, yes, but... This in today's stream, you're getting tons of awesome plastic breakage, so you know that's a bonus. Everyone loves some good plastic breakage. How's it going, Gut Bomb? Yes, no fire is win for me. Oh, all right. Do you hear that plastic cracking? Oh. Okay. All right, so. 
We'll do some research about this Ethernet card. It's set, it's from Apple Computer. 9394. Well, I mean, I think the 5300 came out in. Oh shit. I just spilled my isopropanol. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to curse. Sorry, YouTube gods. I don't want you to have smoke and fire. I'm just saying, Justin, that, you know, I, I'm i willing to to share the smoke and fire just as an example of the broken plastic. This was the first piece of plastic I broke on this thing. This is actually reattached, but I haven't found the other piece of plastic yet. I'll try to put that back together. <laughs> the rear, both of these tabs are broken. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can kind of see the crack. So I've put these back together with acetone. I haven't put this back on since I broke him. All right, so let's go to this beast. So I got this thing maybe three weeks ago. <sighs> you can see the front is more yellow than the rest of it. So I'll take this apart and uh, do some retro brighting on it. Let's see how many pieces we can make. Is the black case on the 5500 as brittle as the beige max? That's a good question. I have no idea. Uh, maybe Steve knows the answer to that one. All right. So what do we got here? Okay, here's our first chance at brittle plastics. So this little uh, rear cover thing. All right, Th this is a major win. I just took this thing off without breaking it, so yay. Um, this thing is interesting. It's yellowed on the inside. <laughs> How does that happen? These were already broken. I didn't do this. All right, uh, what else do we got? Well, we'll take out all the screws back here. There's screws, let's just take them out. This one seems to have an ethernet port already. So that's cool. Okay. Piece of plastic off with all of its tabs attached. We're winning like crazy on this one. All right, here's the hard one. Ugh. Let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. So there's two tabs here. We'll use our dental tools. So from what I understand, the Performa 6200 was basically just a, a Quadra 630 that they crammed a PowerPC processor in, right? Is that, is that what happened to this thing? And that it, it's terrible because they didn't optimize it for PowerPC? I think Sean did a video on one of these. So if you're still here, Sean, you can give us the history. Oh, yep, Garth Beagle has confirmed my story. Oh yeah, I, I feel this. I am gonna break the heck out of these clips right here.
think my <laughs> my spudgers are not strong enough. There we go, got one side up. Okay. Pulling forward a little bit because I think there's tabs up top. Yeah, so there was a remote control because with the, the TV options for these things, you could control your TV with um, the remote control. Um, oh, look at this. No bro broken plastic clips. Woo! Yeah, I used to have a. It was a 6500 with the uh, TV. All right, so now I think this part we lift up ever so slightly and we come forward. A little grody. Not too bad. Yeah, it's weird. It's more yellow on the inside than it is in the front. plastic behind me that hopefully won't fall off. Ah, oh, Bacchus, you gotta, you gotta make it so I'm gonna screw up. All right, side posts, side parts are all off. I'm gonna put these right on the floor <laughs> so that they don't, they can't even fall. Let's take out the logic board, motherboard, whatever. Yes, fan is a little bit, uh, a little dirty. Oh yeah, so like I was gonna say, I bought, the, I picked this up uh, a couple weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Um, I wanted to get this computer, and it, the the whole situation was that a guy was cleaning out a, a quarter house that died. Um, and so he wanted to sell all the stuff, but he would only let me buy the 6200 if I also bought an iMac, uh, a blue iMac. I forget which one. I think it's the one of the original 233s. Um, and then a white iMac, and I think it's a 600. Um, and then... There's also the monitor for this thing, and then also a Tandy CGA monitor. So I had to buy all of that in order to get this. Oh, this is not an Ethernet card. This is a modem. Yep. So that sucks. Nobody wants modems. Let's get rid of that. Not much RAM, at least the cash cards there. Oh, the cash card and the ROMs are the same thing on these. Okay, that's right. Um, you can see that the configuration of this thing is exactly the same as the previous one. Dust flying everywhere, but we have no leakage here. So actually, if I do if it turns out that I did connect those traces to the wrong spot, at least I have a board now that I can compare the where the vias go and stuff. All right. Um, so the, this looks good enough that I feel okay turning it on. I'm probably going to get blown in the face with some dust when I turn this on, but, but let's power it up and see what happens. You just bought a U.S. Robotics 56K this week. <laughs> <sighs> hey, Scott Clary, welcome. <sighs> Getting the new versions or the latest iterations of those operating systems are always fun these days. Uh, 
All right, let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Powered up. That fan is cranking. No, we got screen turning on. Where's my remote? Oh. Uh, eh. Oh. Sounds like the hard drive's toast. Okay. So with those versions of Mac OS, make sure to turn your clock back. If you try to have it set as a modern time, it's going to give you issues. How the heck do you shut this thing off? All right. Um... I think, oh yeah, look at this. Oh God, I can feel it cracking. Yeah, if you try to install one of those versions of Mac OS and it tells you that there's a problem or halts weirdly Set your clock back to like 2018, 2019. Oh God, yep, this is toast. But luckily, Gut Bomb, I think, gave me some 3D printed ones of these things. Um, yeah, that's stuck now we'll get it out eventually it's okay let's get to the hard drive we might actually need this tab to help us pull the hard drive out there we go We might need to put a blue SCSI in this after all, Eric. Yeah, look at the color of that. Wow. I think, I think I have this configured as a bootable Mac OS image. It might not be. But let's try it. I think this should be a one gig, yeah. Got a one gig fireball. I don't know if this is, ooh. There was a sad noise there. Why are you sad? You were just happy.
sad. Why are you sad, bro? <sighs> oh well. What happens? Let's just unplug this briefly. Try it again. It's dust flying everywhere. Got bomb posted the STL files for the uh, drive sled on Thingiverse or on printables. Thank you. That's really awesome of you, Gut Bomb. Maybe the drive worked. It just didn't uh, have an image on it or something. Don't know. Hmm. Now it's not turning on at all. No sad noise. Or it's not booting. No video, I mean. Fine. All right, so let's just take this thing apart because I want to take it apart to clean it anyway. Let's see what kind of parts are in this. Let's see how gross it is. The fan was still going, yeah. Okay. Set aside our logic board. We've got to take this off. Did I not have the display hooked up? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I am a good, good YouTuber. Uh, well, it doesn't matter because my drive didn't work for it anyway. Yeah, I forgot to connect the video. <laughs> it saw what I did to the other machine and got sad. Yeah, we got video now. Okay. So wait a second. Now what happens if I attach this thing? Let's see what the code says. Was it sad because I didn't plug in a monitor? Is that a thing? Oh, no. Okay, so it doesn't like my OS install, I think, on here. It's showing me a Happy Mac. Uh, here we go. It's showing me a Happy Mac, but it just stopped. So I think it's just that my uh, install that I had, this was for my Power Mac 6500. Um, so I think it's just not working. It's so sad that it's happy. Oh, I dropped my mouse. Let's see if that closed YouTube. <laughs> no, okay, good. We're still here. We're still going. Still going. All right, set that aside. Creaky keyboard. Uh, 
<laughs> it's bipolar. Uh, all right, how do we get this apart now? Oh, there is a switch on the back. Vic the Vicar got some radial caps that say 33 microfarad, but they measure 48 microfarad. Um, it could be, uh, there's like a frequency associated with capacitors. It might just be a difference in, um, at what frequency the whole top part slides forward okay yeah all right here we go look we got these little metal clips Ooh. i need some assistance got it to move <laughs> it looks like a finger mangler nice it's a good term there's a lot of you can see there's a lot of contact points here so that's gonna make it difficult Oh, <laughs> that CD chat tray. Wow. It's just like shattering inside there. I'm sure there's nothing I'm forgetting. Oh, there goes the floppy drive. That came out easily, at least. Mm. The 603 gods demand a sacrifice. Set that aside before I shatter it. Ah, okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. There we go. Whew. We've got a little clippy to hold the floppy cable. We've got plastic bits falling out. Take a look at our power supply. Okay, there goes that. Yeah, this is a SCSI CD drive in these.
Okay, how do we get this power supply? little cable there. Got a fan cable here. Does the power supply smell like a filet fish No, it doesn't. It doesn't look bad. But let's get it out of here just in case. Just checking. It looks like the power supply is only held in with one screw. Maybe one screw and a bunch of metal. Yeah, if I pull the power supply, can I show the thing? Yep. Uh, looks like it's only held in with one screw. Am I missing one? Do I need to get this metal tray out of here first? You gotta take the fan out too. This thing seems to want to move. Oh. Okay. okay, so we gotta take that screw out. The fan is structural. Take this thing off, take this thing off. This should uh, lift up out of here. We got this. Whatever the heck that is. There we go. Okay. Our power supply is Apple part number 6140037. Dana Comp Inc. model number DCF704. So this thing looks relatively good compared to, you know, like a 2SI power supply. But I'll probably take this apart and uh, recap it just for good measure. Oh, this won't take too much. Let's just rip this off look at it in a little bit more detail what else are we gonna do right we're just hanging out taking apart nasty old computers I'm actually kind of happy I'm wearing gloves I might do this more often I sometimes watch Justin streams and I'm like wow that Justin he's a smart guy for wearing gloves <laughs> yes, compared to most things, or compared to a 2SI power supply, most things look really good. Okay. It's definitely dirty, but... See some coloration, but it might actually just be um, flux. <laughs> I will not. I will not diss a two SI Sloopy Malibu. I love the two SI. Um, it's, uh, who's the person that hates the 2SI? Uh, I think it was, um, Ron that was giving me crap 
And he said, remember, after you do after you do all this work, it's still just going to be a 2SI. screws here that attach the heat sink down to the case. The 2SI is an overclocking god, yeah. If you're into 2SIs, go check one of my old 2SI streams. I forget when it was, but we did some 2SI overclocking. So this looks all dry in here, so that's good. But you can see there is, around the, the bottom of the board, yeah, there you go. You can see there is some coloration. But they don't look really bad, but I'll go in and Try to make a little map up of this. Yeah, see, like that same color is all the way up here. So it's probably just flux. But since I have this thing apart, nothing looks bad. Like sometimes, you know, when power supplies start to go, you see like crusty resistors and stuff, but that all looks pretty good. It could be just that this machine didn't get a lot of use. I don't know. Uh, what did I get my 2SI up to? I think it was 33 megahertz, um, but I wound up turning it back down because I think the floppy drive stops working at like, um, I don't know, 27 megahertz or something like that. Um, if you don't use the floppy drive, you can make it go a lot faster. Um, does anyone know the size of the Mac 2 PSU fan at 80 millimeters? That seems about right to me. It's either 82 or 9 or 80 or 92, but I think it's 80. Um, yeah. Okay, well, we made a big mess today. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thank you all for joining me. Um, we didn't destroy all the plastic. Um, Look, we have plastic that's still in one piece. Ooh, I even dropped the floppy drive on top of this piece of case plastic. Um, so yeah, I think that's gonna do it for today. I've got a lot of cleaning to do, so I won't subject you to that. Uh, maybe we'll come back next week and put it back together if I can get all of this plastic cleaned up and stuff. Um, so I wanna thank you all for being here. Man, there are so many people. Um, I, I really thank you all for being here. It's really, really, I appreciate it. Um, so, Sloopy Malibu, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Garth Beagle, Vic the Vicar, uh, who else? Garth Beagle, I said you already. Bacchus, Scott Bum, Epictronics, Mac84, Justin D. Morgan, oh, I know I'm going to miss people, The Pan Man GR, Scott Clary, so many people oh thank you for all your comments and notes and stuff and all that um i'm sorry if i missed anyone um but yeah i'm gonna get out of here have a lovely day you all um always great to see you and i appreciate you tuning in see you next week